Welcome to the second part of making the chest of drawers. With all of the drawers fitted, I wanted to make some tapered legs for the front of the carcass. These legs would be purely aesthetic to make the proportions of the chest of drawers look better. I had an offcut of 2 inch thick pine and I started by cutting this to the right height on the mitre saw. Then I marked up a shape for the legs. I made a mark at the top and one at the bottom and then joined the two lines with a straight edge. I used my bandsaw to cut across that line to create the first leg. Then flipped the leg onto the rest of the piece, traced it with a pencil and then made the final straight cut on the table saw. I sanded both legs on the belt sander and rounded over what would become the outside edges of the legs. I fitted the legs by gluing and screwing them in from the sides and also from the top through the bottom drawer separator. I then flipped the carcass upside down again and fitted a brace to the bottom drawer runner at the back just to strengthen the whole structure. I used a salvaged pine bed slab for that. I then used a wood filler to fill any screw and nail holes in the carcass and the drawer fronts. Then I sanded the carcass and the drawers with my orbital sander and my detail sander, brushed off the dust and got ready to paint. My girlfriend wanted the chest of drawers to be pale grey and brown in colour to match the rest of the furniture in the room where it would be used. I looked at what leftover paint I had available in my shed and used a white matte emulsion mixed with a little bit of chocolate brown matte emulsion and finally a touch of black gloss paint to get a light grey colour. The paint went on quite nicely and I gave the carcass two coats. I used the chocolate brown matte emulsion on the drawer fronts and gave these two coats as well. When the paint had dried I applied three coats of varnish to both the carcass and the drawer fronts to provide a protective seal over the paint. In between each coat of varnish I lightly sanded using a 320 grit paper before brushing off all of the dust and then applying the next coat. To make the drawers slide with more ease I used a tea light candle and rubbed the wax onto the runners and the drawer sides. This really helped. It was time to start making a top for the chest of drawers and I was keen to use solid wood for the top. I had some salvaged pine in the workshop that I've had kicking around for a while. One piece was about 20cm wide and about 40mm thick. When I got it, it had a crack running about half the length of the board, which is probably why the reclamation yard let me take it away for free, but I'd glued and clamped it a while back. It was badly bowed in the centre. I ran this through the jointer with the concave side facing down and made multiple passes until it was perfectly flat and smooth on one side. Then I chopped the piece to roughly the right length on the mitre saw before trimming off both edges on the table saw with the flat side facing down to square them off. I had some other pieces of rough sawn pine that weren't quite as wide as the first piece and I put these through the same process squaring off the edges on the table saw passing one of the faces through the jointer until I had a smooth surface and chopping them to roughly the right length on the mitre saw. And with four separate pieces I measured up to find that I had enough material to form the top panel. Then I just needed to get all four pieces to a consistent thickness. 
So I ran them all through the thickness planer and the final thickness for each piece was 25 millimeters. I could then glue up the pieces to form the top panel. A biscuit jointer would have been really useful here to keep each piece aligned and to add strength to the panel, but I don't own one, it's one of those things I've been meaning to buy for a while. I toyed around with the idea of doing some dowel joints instead, and then I realised that what I could do was just to glue up the pieces and clamp them, and then screw through the top drawer runners from underneath, before the glue sets up. This would prevent the panel from bowing under the force from the clamps and I thought it would also minimise any movement of the wood over time and prevent any cracking and it should be plenty strong enough too. I positioned the panel using a tape measure leaving about a 10mm overhang at the front and then fixed the panel to the frame at both sides and also in the middle where the centre drawer separator was. I added a wood filler to any knots, small cracks or holes in the panel. I let the panel dry overnight and then I could remove the clamps. I used a framing square to mark up a straight edge and cut along this with a handsaw on both sides to square off the panel. Then I sanded the panel down, first with my belt sander with an 80 grit paper, then a 120 grit paper, and then I switched to my orbital sander with a 120 grit paper and then a 240 grit paper. I tapered each of the edges of the panel with a hand plane too. The tapers on the end grain needed a good sanding down. I used a mixture of about a 50% dark teak stain and 50% white spirit as when I used the stain on a test piece I found it was a bit too dark, so the white spirit was just to thin the stain. I used an ordinary paintbrush to apply the stain. and an artist paintbrush to apply the stain onto the bottom panel. And earlier I'd applied masking tape around the top of the carcass to prevent getting any of the stain over the painted frame. Then I brushed down the drawer fronts and carcass to remove any dust and applied three coats of satin interior varnish. In between each coat, when the varnish had dried, I lightly sanded with a 400 grit paper before brushing down again and applying the next coat. I was quite happy with the finish once the varnish had dried. The grain looks good and the finish has a slight sheen to it but it's not too glossy. I cut a piece of 5mm plywood on the table saw to fit into the rebate joint at the back of the carcass and attach this with wood glue and brad nails. Finally I added the drawer handles which I purchased from Amazon for around £15 for six. I did lots of careful measuring to make sure that each drawer handle would be straight and positioned correctly. And that was the chest of drawers finished. It was a really time consuming project but it feels good to make use of various things that were heading for landfill and I'm pleased with how it turned out. I just hope my girlfriend is too.